Hi, I'm Kalix from Kalix Creative. Welcome, this is Introduction to Needle Punching. In this video, I will be teaching you how to put your monk's cloth into your non-slip hoop, how to thread your needle punch, and then how to start getting stabby into your monk's cloth and start creating your first needle punching creation. Or maybe not your first, but teaching you how to work with uh, the pattern that is given to you in this needle punching kit. I hope you enjoy. So straight off the bat with our hoop, we are going to loosen the outer from the inner by loosening the screw. You do not need to loosen the screw all the way and take it out completely. Just loosen it up enough so that the outer hoop can be taken off of the inner hoop. And um, that's our first step. Then we are going to grab our monk's cloth with the pattern on it, and we are going to center it as much as we can on top of the inner hoop. Once it has been centered as much as we can, we are going to come back and we're going to bring the outer hoop and we are going to put it on top of the bunks off and inner hoop and press it down until the fabric is firmly secured between the two hoops. Once you've done that, you can tighten up the outer hoop a little bit so that the fabric is firmly secured into the two hoops. And then you are going to go ahead and stretch out the fabric all around evenly so that the pattern is in the middle of the hoops. And this could take a little bit and that's perfectly okay. You got just keep nice and firm with your pulls. Don't go too hard though, or else the hoop can um, pop off of the inner hoop. Just nice, you know, firm tugs and keep doing that until it's centered. And you wanna also make sure there are the white guidelines on the monk's cloth. Just keep those straight so that your pattern is straight as well. Once you've completely done that and you made sure that your fabric is taut on your piece of work, you're gonna go to your screw once again at the top and you're gonna screw in uh, your outer hoop and tighten it real good so that the fabric does not slip. Now we're gonna go on to threading the adjustable needle puncher. There are multiple notches options in this puncher and it goes from A, B, C, and D. Notch A creating the longest loops and D the shortest loops. For this specific kit, we are setting the length to notch D. Once you've done that, we're gonna free the threader loop side first into the needle shaft through the eye from the outside of the shaft. We're going to aim it once through the eye towards the center of the punch needle and go down the tube until the top of it comes out the back of the punch needle. We're going to then go grab your yarn that you're going to be using and we're going to put it through that loop. and give ourselves, you know, maybe a handful of inches so that when we pull the threader back through the needle punch, the yarn does not get stuck in the middle and actually can go through all the way to the end and through the eye. You gotta make sure you keep that threader somewhere safe because it is so thin, it is very easy to actually lose it Once you've done that, you're going to then pull the yarn from the back end of the needle punch 
and pull back the yarn so that you're working with about say an inch or two of yarn from the eye of the needle punch. Now that we've done that, we are ready to needle punch. So you're gonna grab your monk's cloth in the hoop and bring it in and double checking that you've got the couple inches in the eye and having a nice slack yarn at the back end of the needle punch. This ensures that all of your loops will be even and you don't skip any. So always while you're doing this, make sure that you've got a slack line coming through. And then you're going to stab in to the fabric and you're make sure that it bottoms out to the plastic part of the needle punch. And you gotta do that every single you stab through the fabric to ensure that your loops are even. Flip over, you're gonna pull the yarn through and we will deal with the extra long strand once we're done needle punching everything. You're gonna flip back again and you're gonna lift up your needle punch until the tip of your needle skims the fabric and we're going to skip one or two holes and stab right through until the plastic hits the fabric again and do it again and again, making sure that you never lift up your needle punch too far off the fabric. You want it to touch and skim the fabric as you go. As you're punching, you want to make sure that you are going to be keeping that needle forward ahead of you and keeping it even as we go. So you're gonna be rotating your piece as you're needle punching to ensure that you are keeping it in the same direction as you're punching and your loops are even. When you look at the back, you'll see if you have gone and made sure that you have done one to two spaces between each stitch, that you will have loops that are next to each other and there are no gaps in between. If you're not happy with how it looks and it's uneven, that's okay, you can just pull the yarn through because we just create loops over needle punching and yank it until the place where you're happy with. You're gonna pull the yarn from the back end until your needle is nice and taut against the fabric and you're gonna go and stab through the fabric again and keep moving forward. Now that we're completed the first row, we're going to start our second row right underneath. And for all fill stitching, continuing and moving forward, you will skip three to four holes between stitches instead of the one and two before. The first row that you stitch is the detail one to ensure that your outline is nice and crisp and there are no gaps in between, but once you fill in, second, third, or however many rows you're gonna be using, you do not need to make it as detailed and as close together. And if you have more than two rows and you move on to three and four, make sure between each one that the stitches fall between the stitches of the prior row, like the staggered bricks. When both rows of the outline are complete, you're going to then turn over your work and pull a few inches of yarn through the back side of the needle. Be careful to not pull from your work side, instead pull from the needle of the eye and pull away from it. 
you're gonna clip your thread so that it leaves you a couple of inches hanging from the needle and pull the needle out of your work. And now you do the same thing again and you're going to go through the diagram and work through each of those colors one by one. And once we finish that, we'll come back to how we're going to uh, finish off and get rid of the excess strands of yarn on our finished side. Now that we're finished with the project and you've needle punched every single part, we're going to admire the stitch try, then flip over and look at the atrocity that is the front right now, the finished side, which is okay. We're gonna go ahead and grab our scissors and we are going to snip, snip, snip away all of the excess strands and we're going to snip them to the height of the rest of the loops on the piece so that it blends in nicely and work from there. Now, once you're done snipping all the excess strands from your piece, you'll notice that it still, you know, doesn't look that great, which is perfectly okay. If some of the loops are not in the right spot. You're gonna grab your needle punch and with the needle portion of it, you're going to shift all the loops to where they're supposed to be. You can reshape your clouds. Um, you can make the outline of Pascal more even instead of, as you can see right here, a little all over the place. You're gonna push the blue back to where they're supposed to be, the brown outline where it's supposed to be. So everything is back into position where they are and just keep working on your piece until you are happy with where everything is. Eventually, we're also gonna be going to the eyes and the mouth and fixing that and fixing the cheeks so that his face looks a little more even and a little nicer so the smile is nice and sweet for you. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this and learned something from it, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification below to get alerts when new videos go up. Have a fabulous day.